Hi, Sam. In this video, we're going to look at a ggplot2 package in R, which is a advanced uh, plotting system. And we will be looking at the part 1 for uh, this video. And uh, this will cover the qplot, which is called quickplot in ggplot2 package, which is quite powerful, which is a wrapper of both uh, a scatter plot, uh, box plot, and a uh, histogram plot in the base uh, functions. So, okay, let's start. Open the, the R Studio, then select section section eight. You plot to part one. Okay. So I've seen the three basic plotting systems and today we'll focus on the ggplot2 qplot. Okay, in ggplot, which is built based on a principle called uh, grammar of graphics. So this is a gg stands for grammar of graphics. Uh, if you are familiar with Excel chart, uh, recall what you do in Excel is you have a table in Excel and then you select a few data, a few columns, a few rows. Then after that, next is you select one of the charts, say a pie chart, a bar chart, or a line chart. Then after selecting this chart, they will, Excel will plot the basic ones for you. Then after that, what you can do next is uh, you can change the, the, the head legend. So when you are selecting different type of chart in ggplot's area, it's called uh, genomes, geometric attributes, geometric attributes, geometric attributes, and this is where it's like line chart, bar chart, and pie chart, etc. <clears throat> it's the really equivalent there. And in Excel, after that, you have this base plot. You can add the titles. You can change the X labels, Y labels, and also you can format the plot area. Say I want the background to be gray color, I don't want any uh, borders for this uh, chart in Excel, you can do that. And that one uh, equivalently in ggplot is called uh, uh, aesthetic features. So aesthetic features concern about color, shape, size, etc. So this is called building a graph layer by layer. Okay, let's have a look at uh, um, some base plotting system. Which one is not applied to it? It's not uh, the choice three. It's not quite easy to undo some of the effect that you have done for uh, using the base plot. It's uh, difficult to undo. Then the lattice plotting system, for the lattice plotting system, can always add to the plot once it's created. Now, lattice is, uh, system is when you're plotting uh, a lattice plot, Generally, you do it in one shot in one function, and it's uh, not easy to add on. And the ggplot combines the best of the base plotting system and the lattice plotting system. So it's able to allow multiple panels like spacit. So we split the graph into small subgraphs and a plot in the same uh, plotting canvas which is the strength of lattice, and in ggplot we can do it the same and intuitively. Automated use spacing, so many of the aesthetic features uh, the ggplot has the default for you, so you don't need to explicitly specify, so in a sense that the ggplot is pretty smart. It determines, um, yeah, the form makes many choice for you, so you don't need to select the font, the the color of the line, the shape of the data points to display. So there is defaults for it. So all of the above. Okay. 
so yeah the ggplot uh, has programmer philosophy it composed of the aesthetic feature and the geometric features yeah so later we'll see <coughs> Aesthetic features like size, shape, color, geometry, like what the points you want to have, triangle points, square points, or the snowflake points, the lines, line, uh, is it line chart or bar charts, uh, a box plot, and so on. Okay, ggplot has two major workforce uh, workhorse function. One is called qplot, quick plot. Another one is ggplot. In this uh, part one, we will focus more on Qplot, do a deep dive. Okay, so I will look at MPG. Okay, so this is the MG PG file. I will show you structure. PG structure. So let's have a look at this structure. So this is structure of MPG. I have uh, more than 200 observations or 11 variables, manufacturer, models, uh, Audi A4 uh, models, displacement of engine and so on. Uh, later we'll be using some of the features to demonstrate the strengths of the, the QQ plot. Q -plot. Okay, first we want to see there is a correlation, is there is any relationship between the engine displacement and the highway miles, highway miles per gallon. Yeah. Miles per gallon. Let's focus more on the interpretations for you. Okay, so as you can see, the command we use is qplot displacement. The first one you put it there will be the x axis. Then the second uh, variable we put on the second position, there will be the uh, highway uh, miles per gallon. And the data we use is the mpg. Okay, so with these very few uh, critical information you provide, Qplot is uh, quite smart to display a scatter plot. The reason is because we are supplying two variables, x and y. So uh, Qplot automatically creates a scatter plot for you. Okay, now it says we want to provide a force argument, color. And we want to show the colors based on the different driving the different drives so the drives we have is front wheel rear wheel and four wheels so we use a color to 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 demonstrate that okay we add one more color equal to drv and you can see that cars the, 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 the data points are now colored based on their drive types. Their drive types. Four wheels, front wheel, and the rear wheels. Okay. So it's quite straightforward and quite easy. Next is let's have second geometric to def to the default points. How about some smoothing function to produce trend lines? One for each color. Fifth element, jump using the R function C. Equal to the concatenation of point and smooth. Okay, point and smooth. Have a look. Okay, nice gray area. So we plot three smooth lines for the data points colored in respective color and the gray area is the 95% confidence interval how 
the line fits to the data. Okay. Okay. Now we say that okay. We use the Q plot. Q plot will provide three arguments. First time is y equals to wh1. Uh, hwy. We are not providing any x. That gets what you will get. What do we get? So <clears throat> we see the x axis, we are not providing it, but what is the x axis here? It says it ranges from 0 to 250 or 250. And we have 234 data points. So this is the actually the index of the data point from 1 to 234. Okay, the my high. Extracted the HWY variable into my high. Then we see it. Okay, the first one is 29, 29, 31, 30. 29, 29, 31, 30. So it matches the first one 29, 29, 31, 30. So it's actually the index of the data points. Okay. We can also create a box plot using QQ plot. So let's see. Okay, this is the one Q plot DRV. DRV is the variable that you want to split, followed by the measurement HWY, HWY, the miles per gallon. And then the, we specify the geometric equal to box plot. When we are not specifying geometric, the default is the scatter plot, especially when we are providing x and y. So if we want to show a different, uh, pick up a different uh, bo uh, plot type, we say geo geometry equal to a specific type of uh, plot. Well, here we can see the we have three box plot. Uh, split by four wheels, front wheels, and the rear wheels. Okay. Now we add a fifth argument. Okay. Now we see the fifth argument. So it's nice, right? Three regions of the plot. So we still have three regions. Region 1, drive equal to 4. Region 2, drive equal to F. Region 3, drive equal to rare. But what's interesting is for each of the region, the box plot is split based on the different type of manufacturer. They also will provide a color, color uh, argument saying we want to break by uh, manufacturer, color them differently. So quite powerful. Okay, now we move on to the histogram. Histogram. Let's have a look what we want to do for the histogram. A Q plot with three arguments. Q plot with three arguments. First, specify the variable for which you want a frequency count. So, frequency like uh, histogram will generally provide up to one uh, variable. And the second one is a data set. Yeah, we want to find out what. Where where do we get this HWY? It's in PG uh, data frame. MPG data frame. Finally, the aesthetic feel. Okay, feel. If what if we do not specify any? We have a look. <coughs> we have a look. So this is a histogram, right? Very typical, right? So then we put a field to it. See what will happen. Field equals to DRV. DRV drive. 
Now let's look at again. Okay, again. Now the histogram is split into three categories based on the drive type. Right away, the four wheels drive vehicle in this type don't have gas mileage exceeding 30, 30 uh, miles per gallon. So the four wheels, uh, the four wheels are those um, cars consume a lot of gas, very powerful uh, four wheels drive. Then uh, in this case, and for a same amount of gas online, uh, oils, then the four wheels will consume more oil. So generally their miles, mileage will uh, be lower, the average is around 20, 20. so it's smaller than those uh, uh, front wheel and the rear wheel, they are more fuel econ uh, efficient. Okay. Okay, now we are going to call the facets. Facet. Let's use the facet panel. This is uh, split into, okay. So it's like a lattice, we create subgraphs instead of putting everything into a single graph. Okay, let's interpret the result. Okay, the one you use here the one you use here is you put the displacement first followed by the WHY. They still stack scatter plot, then they're from this data. Facet equal to dot till DRV. What does this mean? Uh, facet is a parameter to uh, partition the plotting canvas, plotting area. So on the left hand side, on the left hand side of the tilt, is the number of rows. Let's say you split, you say two tilt three, so there will be two rows, three columns. And in this case, dot stands for the number of rows, indicates single rows. That means uh, that means one only. If you put a dot, basically it means one. Then tilt on the right hand side is a column. How many columns do you want? So the number of columns will be the length of the unique values in DRB. So DRV has three values, four wheels, front and red. So this means one row and three columns. So this is how you interpret it and how you write it. Okay, so this is result. So this is uh, with our expectation. So four wheels, front wheels and the rear wheels. So they are being split into three subgraphs using a very simple parameter called facet. Earlier when we are doing basic, uh, using basic plotting system, what do we do? We define MF rows or MF columns, so a blank canvas, we partition it first, then we plot the graph one by one, one by one. And in Qplot, we can do it in one shot. Okay. Okay, now this one is showing a uh, histogram break by the drive types. Histogram break by the drive types. So on the right side, uh, left side of the tilt, we have the drive, so which will translate into three rows, three rows and one column, three rows, one column, and we also pro provide a bin width. So how wide is each of the bin here? How wide is each of the bin here? Okay, so the facet argument result in the argument of facet. So this is three, one, uh, three by one, three by one, three by one. Three by one. Pretty good, right? Okay, let's review what we have learned about uh, the basic function qplot. What is the following the basic workhorse? Uh, workhorse, uh, which is a quick plot, qplot, not gplot. qplot. Which type of the does the Qplot plot? It actually plot a uh, box, box and whisker plot, they are similar. And scatter plot, yes, we have seen, then the histogram it can also plot. So it's a combination of a few basic uh, uh, plotting 
Charles. GG stand for mm. good grief, go to graph, good graph, and a grammar of graphics. Grammar of graphics. True or false? The geom uh, argument takes a string for a value. Yeah, geom, geom equal to box plot. Uh, double quotation. Cool, so it's true. The data argument takes a string for a value. The data argument, data equal to mpg. Data equal to mpg. Yes, true, right? Not quite right. Okay, uh, data set in quotation, or we don't provide the quotation. So, okay, it's false. Okay. Mm. Close, we can feel it. Okay. Right. Okay. The bin width argument takes a string for a value. String bin width equal to a number, bin equal to two, bin equal to three or five. Nah, so it's not a string, it's a number. So it's false. Because it's a number. True or false? The user must specify x and y x label when using Qplot, not necessary. So Qplot is pretty smart. Or so even you do not specif explicitly specify the labels for x and y, it can automatically take the variable name and uh, uh, make it as the label. Okay, so we have finished the part one of this GG plot, especially the Qplot. Okay, so thanks for watching this session and next session we'll go to the uh, part two part two okay see you